<laughs> Here's your yes, TLDR, absolutely. right? Go for it. So Notorious, uh, they are uh, Chris's uh, studio. He's a senior WoW designer, but he's you know, got a bunch of, uh, you know, real top uh, ex WoW development team talent with him as well. They've got Project Honor. Um, that's their game. And uh, actually a partnership with OTK that was announced at the OTK Festival. So as for what the Honor festival. is, or Expo. The Games Expo. Oh, my head is absolutely right. <laughs> I was just right. thinking Tom's Festival. Is that? <laughs> there, I've just, I've just got brain damage. Um, mm, right, same. here's what we're doing. Uh, Unreal Engine 5, third person camera, action combat, core fantasy classes. It's your warrior, it's your mage, it's, you know, that kind of thing. These guys love Lord of the Rings. They love core Warcraft stuff, like what Samwise and Chris uh, established, way you know, different Chris, uh, Matson, way, way, way back, right, in the, in, in the sort of original days. Um, you know, I think that's the sort of thing that they uh, that they really cared about. Um, PvEVP seems like they're going in a more session-based direction. Maybe it'll evolve more into an MMO sort of light experience over time. Um, but overall, that really does seem to be uh, what they're doing. I'll say uh, this is... Oh, four or five months no no this is like seven or eight months ago had a call with chris chatted through things um i got another one actually on this very chair um where you know i saw some of the stuff from their artists and and, and all of that and uh, i mean yeah you know they're evidently guys who are super experienced and uh they get it community is uh 100 very deeply in uh, in the core of how they do things um i already knew that because you know they yeah. were reaching out way back um really trying to have the community be involved in uh, in development for for um you know, as, as much as they can basically uh, but now this is like very much consummated with otk which is obviously an organization that uh you know where does its revenue come from well i guess like you know sponsorships and stuff like that it is all based off having a large community platform between the different streamers i think for a game like this most notably like you know asmgold sband um the tips streamed classic as well. He's the COO of um, of OTK. Hmm. So uh, yeah, that's what they're doing. Yeah, I think from a very obviously, I would generally recommend unless it's Dragon's Dogma two, not getting hyped at any video game, especially not a video game very far off. But they seem like they know what they're doing. I'm certainly excited to see where it goes. Yeah, so, I remember the the big sort of ball chain thingy for the warrior. That was oh, yeah. even one of the things that they, uh, you know, they were they were telling me. But basically, they're just really hyped about the idea. I think of like you know different weapons and things like that. And mm -hmm. I guess with how they're making this, you know, UE five, whatever way they're planning to build it, just like having a, a real, you know, the classes feel transformative um, because they're really basically trying to kind of push forward what we're doing within these fantasy archetypes. And it's very much like, hey, man, you like Lord of the Rings? You like a mage? You want a mage to be a mage? Like sort of classic, you know. Uh, classic fantasy then they're they're here to do that uh which i think is great because yeah, sure a lot of fantasy is pushing and maybe like a more sort of new modern direction or whatever um but it's good to have multiple different uh you know things catered for so very okay. excited to see where things go for them um i think uh yeah you know they're they're small they're in the early stages but i think they certainly do have the team to pull off something very cool goddamn god damn i'll try gremlin i'll yeah, gremlin. gremlin do the cold drew very very cool, and I mean you can, you can like see the the Warcraft and the the Tolkien and the, um, you know you, you can see it all in all of this right. So, uh, I think uh, oh Colin Volrath he uh, he did Boralus. he did Boralus. We actually it's the only time I've sent post. Oh yeah, to that's Blizzard. Right. Yeah, we is we had a little Boralus inspired uh, you know bit of art and we sent that his way. Hmm. So anyway, yeah, there you go, and that's what's up with Notorious. So good luck to them. Pretty awesome and uh, a pretty unique thing in the space because I think it's Galaxy Partners. Because I think it's like Galaxy, yeah, Galaxy and Ventures. Riot. Ventures, yeah, they're kind of like theirs, you know, sort of initial investors. OTK coming aboard as well. Like that just brings a whole dimension of community and, yeah. and stuff as well. So powerful. Uh, another Absolutely. very powerful thing, I think this team's just a little bit more ahead in the process and I think a bit more ahead in the team size as well. Hmm. Uh, it is Frost Giant who have got uh, Stormgate. Uh, now, the Stormgate, I've got to say, um, I was talking to them a, a decent few days ago. Very much, I saw their kind of like um, their briefing. Super fucking strong, super super strong. So yeah, Stormgate. Basically, it's like StarCraft Three. Uh, it's kind of how I sort of see things almost. <laughs> um, I actually, I really like this. I know that a lot of people were kind of like, um, you know, being like, "Oh, this isn't a big Blizzard cinematic." 
Uh, this is apparently real time in Unreal Engine 5, which I just think is fundamentally pretty damn cool. Yeah, I think And it's... especially, uh, like, roughly knowing the team size, like, it's kind of preposterous yeah, it's... to just say, oh, this should look as expensive or have, like, as many dynamic scenes and super expensive animations as a full Blizzard cinematic done by a bespoke team. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's like, that's not realistic at all. Yeah, it's a little bit of kind of almost literally like a weight classing, where it's just, this is not a heavyweight cinematic. This is a little bit more bantamweight. This is a little bit more flyweight. It's really exceptionally good for its class. Yeah, absolutely. You just can't really put it up against someone who's, you know, 300 pounds of muscle. Yeah. And expect it to, you know, stand toe to toe. It gets the core beats across. Yeah. You know, just even the, the sound effect at the start, like, they, you know, mm. they put me right where I needed to be for this game. Mm. Um, what I will say, man, the in-game art style, I fucking love. Um, I know there's a lot of people who are like, oh, this, this is stylized. It should, it should be hyper-realistic. Everything should be hyper-realistic all the time. Uh, yes. Generally, I prefer stylization. It is what has served World of Warcraft and Blizzard yeah. well for so many years. Yeah. In a game like this, it means readability. Readability is the fucking core. So important in a real-time strategy game. StarCraft II, great readability. Um, this, I think... Fantastic readability, maybe even better readability than StarCraft 2. Uh, and you look at a game that went hyper real in a way that I think people with not great taste in art uh, liked is War 3 Reforged. Oh, yeah. Because there's motherfuckers out there who think those Warcraft 3 Reforged models look good. I guess because they have more polygons and the textures, there's more. Yeah. I mean, but in my head, it's like, cool, you've completely lost all the fucking character, all the art style, and now you've made Warcraft 3 look like Raid Shadow Legends. Yep. So I have. Well done. I have a. Uh, well, okay. Well, this isn't a task, so I wouldn't expect anyone to do it. But if I were, you know, if I were some all-powerful creator, I would take everyone who has ever advocated for realism or hyper-realism over stylization of video games, and I would sit them in a room and go, you're only allowed to play AAA PS3 games from now. For, <laughs> for the next 15 years, oh, you that's all man. you're allowed to play. You're allowed to play shooters, third-person shooters, maybe some bad Uncharted clones, just from the PS3 era, nothing else. Then you come back after that and tell me how much you like realism. Just, here's brown. It's just fucking brown. It's the only colour in the real world is brown. And then you like you go look at fucking Ori in the Blind Forest. It's a good yeah, person. Why did games get <sighs> fucking worse as soon as we could do photo reel? Yeah, because it was oh yeah, so they're all great. Yeah. Everything everything feels slow. The frame rates are bad, the frame timings are worse, and everything's brown. <laughs> yeah. What Old a, games, brown and gray. A golden age of video games for sure. Or it's like, here, there's fucking color. This is yeah. a feast for the eyes. So I fucking love how Stormgate looks. I also think mm -hmm. that with the global illumination, they talked the, you know, about that being a thing they're excited for. Uh, just all those like real fancy, like, you know, truly, oh, this is a, a new engine. Those yeah. features that they can bring to bear in this, I think will look especially good here. Um, because all the hyper real lighting and stuff like that, when applied to a photoreal game, it can look fantastic. It still doesn't look like reality, but when you apply those techniques to a stylized game, it can truly look incredible. Yeah, I mean, also, as well. I th yeah, also, well, I think even when it comes to like realistic, well, okay, realistic lighting is a bit of a different topic, but it's like the so, yeah, you yeah, want realistic. Yeah, the visuals too, yeah. need to serve the game. Yeah, because like I guess that's one of the things people always find interesting. Where you know when you walk in or out of a cave in a game, that's not how light works. That's not how the eyes work. If you were playing those games realistically, you'd walk into a cave and have to sit there for a couple minutes until your eyes adjust, or you'd have to wear an eye patch in game. Or you know, would you would you like to try realistic movement in video games? Realistic fall damage. Everything has to serve the gameplay experience before it has to serve reality, because reality is a boring piece of shit by comparison. <laughs> That's why we play video games. Yeah, whereas video games do whatever you want. Yeah, so you, can, so you can actually invent things that are cool, yeah. interesting. Like here's here play Mario with realistic jump physics. <laughs> you wouldn't get anywhere. <laughs> so like there's one shot for another one of like sort of more because like the basically it's yeah. not Zerg. They're basically like demons from hell. Uh, but I think they're planning a few twists and changes there. Um, hmm. With you know like a sort of backstory and stuff. I mean hey you you can tell there's Blizzard DNA and the quality of these rocks because damn can Blizzard not do a quality rock. Um, but I just think like man the, the rendering is is so pretty. This all looks so pretty. Um, I think it here's does. another great example of um, 
you know, like the way that your muzzle flashes and stuff can actually light the scenes. I think you could end up getting some that really atmospheric, like just great shit here. That would feel amazing if you had a whole blob of Marines. Yes. Just firing into the darkness and seeing like the reflection stuff. That's the kind of stuff that's like really cool atmospheric, especially if you design like single player story missions around exactly that moment. If you've got one flamethrower dude, you see one target, you light it up. Oh, there's not just one target. There's maybe a bunch of uh, not Zerg eggs on the wall. Yeah, and then the thing, like, you can do all that with the editor. Yeah. So they are planning a really kick-ass editor for this game. They know the, like, the importance of custom games in War 3 and Star 2. So uh, they're doing that. Uh, they're, I think it's a pretty big focus for them as well. So that's going to be really cool. Um, game's free to play. You've got to remember, StarCraft 2 is a free to play game. Uh, free to play was very successful oh, yeah, for so Star Yeah, shit, I forgot about that. Uh, free to play was very successful for StarCraft 2 and it made the shift. Um, so here, basically, I think you kind of get like obviously all the gameplay stuff. And I think like the first chapter of the story is like the free to play base product. Mm. But then the monetization is like StarCraft 2. There are going to be some cosmetics that you can buy um, as they kind of like roll through their seasons and stuff. And uh, the future narrative content, you know, you like buy, you buy in the same way that you log into StarCraft 2 free to play. I think you do get some free narrative content Then you can buy the expansions uh, and stuff like that. So ultimately, I think that's good. I think that makes sense. They have a very big focus as well on the cooperative experience, be that in it, their own, basically the next evolution of co-op commanders, which I found out were actually a wildly popular and successful game mode in StarCraft 2. Yeah, a little quiet success. Like yeah, it was a quite a massive quiet success. Um, so they're kind of taking on the advancement from that. Um, I mean, it's interesting. They've uh, like just some really awesome hero <laughs> designers and stuff. Yeah, there's, there's Nick saying StarCraft 2 is still doing okay. Probably because Blizzard hasn't touched it in 10 yeah, years. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's exactly it. Some oh, concept yeah. art as well. Um, I did talk about this like a little bit more in the other channels. Um, just as for some of the teams, so we've got the former production director of Star 2 and Command & Conquer uh, Generals 2, Tim Campbell, who was game director of Wasteland 3, uh, lead campaign designer of Frozen Throne. Nice. Pretty strong. And then, you know, you just like lead engineer Star 2, senior program manager of Blizzard Esports, co-founder of Day9 TV. Right, so it's like, there you go. In with the Day 9 stuff, so Kara obviously gets it. Yeah. Like, for this genre, right? Like, Day 9 is such a figure in StarCraft. Um, yeah, you know, here you go. Former lead artist of Star 2, principal artist D4, former lead designer Star 2, creator of Gameheart. Kevin, former lead co-op designer StarCraft 2, project manager for Team Liquid, esports org. Hmm. Right, so just, you know, kind of going through lots of tenure, Lots of skills, and uh, yeah, so I think right now they're kind of like just you know, sort of throwing up their team, doing their stuff to, to get this game into people's hands in a closed beta next year. I'm very excited. If I didn't know that's actually Dana's mother. I didn't know that. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Aw. Yeah. That's really that's nice. Well, yeah. <laughs> that, is, that is some serious RTS, like blood language on there. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, you've got those two brothers, like. Yeah. What? Well, damn wow so look there you go stormgate i'll say uh i'm personally extremely excited for it yep. it seems like uh you know the sort of game the blizzard never would have been allowed to make again because the rts genre it's like starcraft 2 super successful super healthy game it could have kept on making content for that but what we saw like reading between the lines some of the schreier reports it was just they moved all their shit over to d4 and Overwatch 2, because those were the big, big, big products that they really needed to get out there, mm. which meant that, you know, poor old Heroes of the Storm, poor old StarCraft, just not important for the company. So it's like, if you want a StarCraft 3, I don't think you look to Blizzard. I think you kind of look here. No. Um, and, you know, they, so they've got their two factions announced. There is, I think, going to be a third. Yeah, they, they, um, they, there, there is they going to be a third. They, they, so show. they do want, like, and they are framing this. It's a Blizzard RTS. It's Blizzard like RTS. It's in that lineage. Uh, they were, you know, they were talking to me about. I mean, obviously, is the staff, but their whole like all of the, I guess, like what the game's actually running on, underneath, like not just the visuals. Um, that's all like theirs and custom because you know they were talking about how uh, like pathfinding 
and just game feel. Those are the fucking core of Blizzard RTS, feel like Blizzard RTS. So they are doing all those things custom so they can achieve mm. exactly what they want to. Um, what they've talked about with some of the approachability, you know, the idea of like, I'm not going to get into the whole building a hatchery or a command center <laughs> efficiently, but they have uh, a few little innovations in user control that I think do a great job of like uh, raising up the skill floor. Lowering the skill floor. Lowering the skill floor. Yes, yeah. that's it. Yeah, that's the thing. They say specifically on their Steam page that their goal is to lower the skill floor so people aren't quite as intimidated to plan stuff, but then raise or keep the skill ceiling as high as it is in the likes of yeah. StarCraft, just because you basically can climb as high as you can climb. Because there's nothing like worse than, hey, here's a game, super hype, or rather a genre, or a game in a genre, hyper-renowned for this insane high ceiling. And then they accidentally pull it down when they're pulling the floor down. But in this case, they I imagine they're intelligent enough to know what makes this game easier. What makes it easier without removing the like version. The uh, the actual skill, especially the satisfaction of doing like the little manual things. Yeah. The example I always use is um Grand Blue Fantasy. Grand Blue Fantasy versus sorry, is it even called Grand Blue Fantasy or just Grand Blue Versus? Anyway, Grand Blue Versus has one button uh, commands for like special moves. It's a fighting game. But you do more damage if you do them properly and get some more properties. Yeah. So it's like, if you don't want to learn it, you don't have to, but you should. So you will. And that's the thing. Like, Yeah, so look, I, I just, uh, I get the sense that they've got it and that this is the team to deliver this kind of game. Yep. And this is a kind of game that I want to keep on existing because I love StarCraft 2, but evidently Blizzard is not particularly interested and, yep. uh, I mean, Team 1 basically dissolved, right? StarCraft 2, active development, yep, gone. ceased. Just deleted. <laughs>